was clever, <laughs> strong, and he had very big horns and he knew just the thing to do. Um, yes, the training sessions organised by the Institute of Education were all about the pedagogy behind um, teaching um, children with English as an additional language. So they covered all um, sort of aspects of language acquisition. Um, well, as part of the P2P project, I'm looking at some of the children that can speak English but are struggling to understand the deeper meaning of texts um, and maybe struggle with higher end vocabulary. So getting to know the child better, getting to know what their learning needs are, then giving them support, reading lots with them, building up their vocabulary, giving them a lot of pictorial support as well, working within a group. If you've got a number of pupils in your class that don't speak very much English or no English at all, then at least you can put them together. There's drama, role play, all sorts of opportunities for children to be able to articulate the right grammatical structures and use the correct language. The key message for our staff has been how to make our teaching um, more inclusive. We used freeze frames with the children because I believe it helps, it helps them certainly working in mixed ability groups. By working in those groups they can listen to structured sentences and they can adapt their own from theirs. Also with the uh, rehearsal time it gives them time to practice it before they're showing it. Aeroplanes guys! We were doing freeze frames, so we, we had to stand or do a position, and we had to stay still. And then Mr Hickman told us to say words explaining what we were doing. So I'm a lot more concerned now with the vocabulary that I'm using. I will go and then put it out to them. Can anybody tell me what that means? I'm, being, I'm exaggerating. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm sort of beefing it up a bit. I'm making my expressions more than they would normally because I want everyone to see them. Um, further up in the school, Key Stitch 2, we've had a focus on using ICT to support language ac acquisition. So um, we've had children using iPads in the class. We use our iPads and when we don't understand the words, we can immediately search it, search it up and we look at the pictures and explanation of it and then we understand it. Yes, help me a lot. Like, if, if I don't know one word, yeah, I'll go in the, in the images or the facts about it. Oh, and then uh, Wikipedia. The, there's an app called Kino. We put our um, stuff that we know already and we put the images in it as well to um, make us remember when we go back to a new slide. For my children that I've been working with, they've got much more confidence now in class. They put their hands up to answer questions. They're happy to take a risk. They will answer a question without getting embarrassed anymore if they have the wrong answer. It gives us confidence to answer questions to the teacher. I put my hand up a lot more and I understand the teacher. We feel confidence in class and we feel independent. What we can see from the project, which I found really interesting, is the confidence levels it raised in the teachers, which is equally important because a lot of the teachers said they had very little confidence in the pedagogy of, of learning a new language. But after the input from the Institute of Education on that, their confidence levels have, have risen significantly. Yeah, since starting the project, um, I found that they, those children are more likely to use um, use higher end vocabulary than they were beforehand, they're more likely to take risks. Metamorphosis. A fetus. Um, levers and pulleys. Or elevator. Similes. Adverbial phrases. If you're learning English as a second language, it doesn't have to flow like an English speaker does, but it's just a case of taking risks and having a go. And as long as they're having a go at things to improve their writing, and that's what I'm all I'm concerned about. Thank you.